Hello and welcome. In this presentation, I'll discuss some of the ways to design lean systems layouts and the idea of Kanban signals. One of the ways in which lean systems operate is by using one worker, multiple machines kind of cell uh, layout, cellular layout. Here, there is one worker who is managing multiple machines and essentially each machine uh, makes or does something on a particular product. Some of these machines might be um, automatic and hence the role of the worker might be just to ensure that once that machine has completed its processing, it can be moved to the next machine. For some, there would be some manual activity to be done. By doing so, the worker has uh, complete ownership in how that product is uh, moving between machines, the flow of the product, and also the quality of the output coming from each of the machines. So this would be one example of the type of layout that uh, you would see in lean systems. The other example would be that of group technology cells. Now, if we look at the left-hand side figure, we see we have quite a jumbled flow between different uh, stations. And here, what, what has been done is that different stations have similar kind of machines uh, all put together. So for example, the lathing station or lathing area has all the lathing machines. Then you have the milling machines put together here. All the drilling machines are on this side. Then assembly is going on here, grinding machines over here. So this is very process oriented layout with different machines clubbed together based on their similarities. By doing so, we can see that the products that are to be made will be flowing in a very jumbled way. For some products, it has to go from one lathing machine to the next lathing machine and then to the milling machine and then directly to assembly. For others, it might be from a lathing machine, it might have to go to the drilling machine and then to the assembly. So there might be different types of patterns that would be required based on the type of product that is being made. On the right hand side, what we see is that now that layout has been restructured in such a way that there are three different cells, cell one, cell two, and cell three. And these cells are focused on products that are similar or family of products that have similar processing requirements. So cell one would have two lathing machines followed by a milling machine and all the products that will be going through that cell would require similar processing. And then cell two would be one where you would have a milling machine followed by a grinding machine. And that's the sequence that all the products going through cell two will have to follow. And cell three would have a lathing machine followed by a milling machine and then drilling machine. So we see that there is some bit of jumbled flow still there. So there is some bit of jumbled flow, but there are quite a bit of streamlined flows as well, depending on the family of products that are being made. So that's uh, the example of a group technology cell which facilitate lean systems. Now we'll try to understand what Kanbans are, uh, what Kanban signals are. Kanban refers to a Jap, uh, it's a Japanese word which refers to card or visible record. And these are the cards that are used to control the flow of production through a factory unlike uh, using sophisticated technology for coordination, these are very simple tools which help in coordinating different processes, different workstations, and hence ensuring that the flow of uh, production matches the flow of demand or the rate of demand. So this is how uh, a Kanban system would work. You would have a receiving post where cards are placed. You would have uh, two operating, in this case, two different operations that are being done. One is the fabrication cell, the other is the assembly line. There are two assembly lines depending on the product that is being made. You have a storage area where empty containers are kept at one place and full containers would be kept at another place. And we have in the receiving post two different types of cards, one for product one and the other for product two. So we're making two different products in this, in this system here. So it starts with a Kanban card for product one being taken from the receiving post. And then that card has been placed on one of the empty container. And that empty container is then brought to the 
fabrication cell with the card on it. Once that empty container with a card comes to the fabrication cell, that's a signal to the fabrication cell that it has to start making the product. Once the fabrication cell finishes uh, making the product, then the full container um, bin is then taken from the fabrication cell to this area where full containers are to be placed in the storage area. Once it reaches full, uh, the full container area within storage area, that full container is being brought to assembly line one, which uh, then processes these uh, items. And uh, finally, products are made at assembly line. For product two, likewise, there'll be a Kanban card, a different color to signal that this is product number two. When that has to be made, a card is placed on an empty container and then brought to the fabrication cell. At the fabrication cell, they make the product and from there, the uh, full containers are brought to the storage area. And once again, these full containers are then brought to assembly line two, which is going to process these items. And then the products are being made at assembly line two. So this is the way the cards are signaling what to make, how much to make, because each container would have a certain specified quantities that can be placed in it. So the general operating rules for Kanban system to, to work well is that each container must have a card for, for it to be moved from one point to the other for production to begin. Uh, and then uh, the assembly will always withdraw from the fabrication. It has to be a full system because the fabrication uh, otherwise would make too much of inventory that then will become a work in process inventory in, be in between fabrication cell and assembly. So it has to be only when assembly wants something that the fabrication will make it. The third operating rule is that the containers cannot be moved without a Kanban. So once again, Kanban uh, needs to be the signal, which then tells that this particular container has to be moved from one uh, process to the other, or from uh, the empty container storage area to the process where it has to be made. The fourth operating rule is that containers should contain the same number of parts and this is predetermined in terms of how many parts needs to be there in the container. The fifth is only good parts are passed along. So this goes back to process considerations within lean systems that uh, there has to be quality at the source. So when the worker is working on a product, they have to ensure that anything which is coming out of their workstation has to be of good quality and only good parts should be moved along from one point to the other point. And the sixth operating rule is that the production should not exceed authorization. So it's again, highlighting the fact that uh, you only produce what is needed by the next workstation and not, not anymore. Now in the Kanban system, it's important to determine two things. One is how many units should be held in each container. And the second is how many containers they should be. These two determinations are done uh, by means of some uh, quantitative uh, analysis of uh, how much work in process inventory needs to be there, what exactly the cycle times are. Uh, so uh, quite a few of these concepts from process fundamentals like cycle time, Little's law are uh, foundational in determining the number of units in a container or the number of containers that needs to be there in the Kanban system. Now, you could have Kanban systems, which are container-based systems as well, other, slightly another kind of technique where these containers are uh, essentially themselves a signal device. So instead of cards, many times the container themselves will act as signal device. These are typically used for um, uh, low value items um, in many organizations. And this works well with when these containers are specifically designed for parts. So they would have these slots within which certain parts can be placed and only those parts can be placed. Nothing else can be placed in these containers. So when these containers are empty, then it indicates that that particular part has to be made. The other kind of Kanban signal are the ones which are called container-less signals or systems in which you don't have any container, but instead uh, there would be visual means uh, to indicate that a product has to be made or the product has been made. So this could be, for example, painted squares 
on the workbench of a, of a certain worker. And uh, this would be, uh, for example, small unit squares within which the item, once that product has been made, is placed. There could be a few of these painted squares on the workbench, which then uh, needs to be filled in with the item that has been made. And once those are filled in, it indicates the required production is over and the next workstation can then come and take those items to be processed again. So that there could be other variations of Kanban systems than the one which we just saw uh, in the previous two slides. Uh, but in general, the idea is uh, that there has to be a way in which uh, processes can signal to each other what is to be made, how much has to be made. And this is a very effective way in which uh, it helps in making that coordination and therefore accomplish the objectives of lean systems. So in this presentation, we looked at some design layouts for lean systems and the idea of Kanban signals. Thank you.